Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of In Studio with Stefan Flynn. First of all, sorry for being a bit late with the, this week's episode. Um, I had a bit of technical difficulties last week, so we are running a bit late, but everything's sorted and so we're back in action. And a big thank you to everybody who sent through feedback and questions regarding the first two videos. I had a lot of questions and feedback on drums and people asking me to go into a bit more detail on specific topics, like for example, how to set up the parallel compression from scratch, things like that. So I'll be doing one or two short videos about how to set up those functions and things like parallel compression with the blank, blank profile from scratch. And we'll get to those shortly. Anyway, this week we get to the fun part or my favorite part of almost any track, which is the bass line. Um, this week I'm going to show you guys how I layer my bass lines to get them sounding really big and fat, but still being very tight and clean and to sit well in the mix. I'm going to show you guys how to layer them, how to put everything in its own place, both on the frequency spectrum, but also as far as stereo imaging is concerned. And then just show you two or three examples. I'll show you guys um, on three of my tracks how I did it. And then also I will show you guys how to make a bass treatment bus, which basically is a bus that you'll send some of your bass signal to and it just helps to process it and just to get it um, nice and solid and sticking out. So let's get straight into it. This is my release with Johanna Kok and Nanya Novak on F Record, CS Falling. Um, this is one of the more like progressive house EDM sounds, but um, I like this track as an example because it's it's a good example to show you how to layer things. So this is the track, so you guys can hear, and then I'll show you just the bass. <laughs> So that's what the track sounds like and this is a great example to show you guys how to lay your bass lines and how to put each and every part of it in its own space. This bass line as you've heard it now, you can hear it, is a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 layers and then 2 stabs, although the stabs you know, arguably aren't actually bass. But I mean, for such a simple bass line with so many layers, it's just a great example to show you how to use layering, layering to get a really, really good sound. And so we're going to start with the foundation. The foundation of any bass line is your low end. And when it comes to low end, um, there's a couple of rules that I stick with. First of all, it has to be mono. Your low end has to is the foundation of a track. It has to be sitting dead center. Second of all, if you're doing a bass line like this with a lot of distortion and noise and you know kind of elements like that. Always have a layer of the low end that isn't distorted, that's 100% pure. Because you'll find that when you start distorting things like your sine wave, etc., you, you kind of, you really lose that like, that like really like low rumble. And um, you want to keep that bass as pure as possible. So the foundation or the sine in my track sounds like this. And as you can hear, it's not very audible because that's not its job. Its job is to be the foundation. The job is... This is what people feel, not the part that they hear. And so I'm going to show you guys how we've made that and how to set the foundation for your track. First of all, this is just sine. It's one oscillator. I use sineth with um, initialized preset. And you'll see it's one voice. It's sine. Uh, it's two octaves down. And the most important thing, like I said, it's got to be sitting in the middle. So your stereo image is as far down as it can go. And you can just see you know, fairly basic sound and basic envelope structure. Then another thing is very important is look at my view meter and the volume. Look at how low it is. Close this. Look over there. Remember in drums where I discussed headroom and gain structuring. This is the most important thing for getting a really, really good low end sound is you need to have enough headroom. You can't force fatness. You can't make it too loud. The idea is to get it as low as possible so that you can process it well without having any issues with clipping and with having enough headroom. Then you'll see my EQ. As you can see, like we discussed when I was teaching you guys how to process drums, remove everything you don't need. So this isn't meant to have any high 
or mids in it. This is purely the low end, so everything's been cut out. You can see there, and then also you'll see here at 30 hertz, I took out everything lower than that because obviously that isn't really audible, but it will create unnecessary mud and rumble. Then after that, I used a, a plugin that I really love, which is our bass from Waves. Compression. There isn't much click in this, so I've kind of taken out. Um, you know, this is a side chain compressor, and I don't. I want the kick to be able to come through, so I've taken out as much attack as I can. And you'll see it's quite an aggressive side chain. And you'll see over here, I put a second side chain on. I don't always do this, but the sound was so like dominant that I needed a second one just to kind of get that pumping sound that I needed and then I've got a utility at the end which is just once again making 100% sure you'll see here with my width that this is 100% mono and then that's basically it as you can see it's very basic but this is the foundation of the track this is the part that the people are going to hear and I, I apply these principles on any track always absolute low end of my bass if I'm making a lecture track I'll duplicate the sound and then I'll I'll take one and put a dead center and make sure that that's the one that I process to really bring out the low end. So if you play this with the kick. That's what it sounds like. Then, now that we've set the foundation for the bass, we can now start getting creative and start coloring a bit and starting to go wider and wider. And so the first, or well, the next layer in this bass line is the saw which is in the middle centered saw so this is what it sounds like and if you layer it with the sound that's what it sounds like and yeah, there's a bit of click coming through there from the side chain which i still need to remove and with this once again have a look at the eq is the first thing i want to show you you don't want to have anything competing for space so you'll see here basically the the low end from this sound has been cut out and that's because we've already got that frequency in the track and it's been provided by the sound wave you know you don't need to you've already filled that space in this track remember everything is competing for space and it's important to have everything sitting in its own space so you've got the sound wave sitting in that area over here and so that's removed from the saw you don't need it you'll just be creating mud anyway this is um, it's a preset that I modified slightly You'll see it's a saw, it's got a lot of voices. This one is sitting a little bit wider, although still quite centered in the mix. Um, I did that because you'll see later we've got other sounds which we've panned a lot wider. And it's quite a basic distorted saw sound, there's nothing really to it. Um, you'll see, like I mentioned, my EQing. Then I've got a compressor just to bring it out a bit. So if we go. Near the difference it brings just giving it a little bit of attack then once again i've got my old bass on yet and there's something that i actually almost never do but i did it in this track is having isotope ozone on top of a single layer usually i only use it on for mastering or it's very rarely that i use it like this but we did in this scenario and i think the reason for it the reason why i actually did it was because mainly for the multi-band compressor if i remember correctly i wanted to bring out certain frequencies and um, just to make it, give it a little bit of a, I don't know, more dynamics. And then we're coming to the two layers of saw that we've put wide in the mix. And the, the main thing to remember is that low frequencies always need to be centered. And then as you start working up to your highs, you can start going wider in the mix. And so you'll see that if we add these two now, which is right and saw left, listen to the difference. But now have a look. Basically, these two are duplicated. They've just panned differently. So if you have a look at this, look at the EQ. There's almost no low end in these frequencies. First of all, because you've already put low end in the middle. This is just to give it a bit of spread and to make it sit nice and wide. And to, to start giving, you know, this is a layer, like I say, everything in its own space. But as you go wider, you need to start cutting more low end and focusing on your highs because you can't really have low end sitting wide in the mix because it makes the mix very muddy. It's the exact same preset on silent. It's got a bit more overdrive and bite and a bit more tops and almost all of the low end. I mean, if you have a look here, all the way up to almost 900 hertz has been cut off. And then after that, basically, processing is quite the same. You've got your side chain 
And so these two layers give it the width. But as you can hear, there's almost no layer. Then you'll see I've added two layers of noise, which are also sitting quite wide in the mix. So if you listen to this, And once again, this just adds, this is this is the color. This is the part, you got to remember when you're creating a bass line, um, it's almost like the principle people use when, when making the tracks loud or mastering is called perceived loudness, which basically means that it's not always about making something loud, but often it's just about making people's ears perceive that it's loud. And using these kind of techniques in a bass line really helps to get that really wide and big feel without clutching you know, you're low in too much. You know, once you've set your foundation, you can start coloring the, the higher mid end and really having it sit really wide in the mix without without having your mix muddy. And so basically, if you look at this, on these layers here, this is just a little bit of square and saw and then some noise. You can clearly hear the noise. Once again, very important, look at my master on this synth. You can see how low it is. It's all about headroom. All about headroom and gain structuring. You can see how much nowhere in the signal flow is there any signal clipping or being maxed out. And so now, as we start adding all of these layers, listen how well they complement each other. there with the kick. Excuse all the background noise. I'm on the plot tonight. <laughs> okay, have a listen. And that's basically it. That's the baseline for CS falling. And then the last thing I do is the same principle I used with my drums is I bus all my bass together into one bus. And then I'll do a little bit of EQing on the actual bus itself some compression and then a master side chain on the entire bass bus. And once again, you know, I'm always hammering this into people is it's you know it's all about your gain structure. You can see that all of those layers of bass together still have enough headroom to give you more space for compression and for some, for some blast. Processing. And that's very important, guys. You can see, you know, the, how important the gain structuring is and just having enough headroom in your mix. So, yeah, anyway, let's move to the next track. The next track is going to be a trance track. And it's actually going to be a glimpse of my new single that's releasing next year. And I'm using this example because I want to show you how I would use these principles of layering on a rolling trance bass line. And then after that, we'll go into a deep tech bass line where I'm going to show you how I make a bass treatment bus, which I've used in all of these tracks. As you'll, I'll quickly show you here. If we go to my send tracks, you'll see send track D. Return track is going to my bass bus, but I'll show you guys that in one of the next clips. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, we're back. And I'm now going to show you guys how I applied similar principles to a rolling trance bass line. This is my new vocal trance single that's going to be coming out next year, hopefully in February. And this is a trance track, so just to give you guys an idea. So that's the bass line in this track. And Similar principles, but just a little bit different. So I'm just going to be showing you the various layers and how I've applied the same principles on a different style or genre of music. And basically, let's go. I'm using. Actually, the sign was off there. And so if we have a look here, okay, first layer, as always, my sound wave, basically the same principles, although this is obviously a different pattern because this is a different um, style of track, uh, the, you know, rolling, rolling trance is a kind of offbeat 
on the low end. And it's a very similar, if you look at the sound length, similar sound wave that I'm using. Like I said, it's just the pattern that's different. And once again, mono. So basically, the first layer sounds like this. If you play that with the kick. Quite basic, that's the foundation for the bass line. Then if we start looking at the next layers, this is um, already coming to into the rolling elements. And basically what we've got here is um, also a precinct that I've modified. And as always, like I say, you roll off as much of the low end as you can. I'm using quite an aggressive compressor on this sound, and the main reason for this is just to bring that attack out. Obviously, it's got quite an, a, an open attack sound and or attack time, and just kind of gives it a little bit of edge, a little bit of um, especially on that like acid sound. And then, as per usual, my side chain compressor, and these two are duplicated, and one is sitting hard right, and one is sitting hard left. Then something I did in this track, and this is actually this is a bit of a trick that I learned from Max Graham, who's you know one of my inspirations when it comes to trance music, and I just found it worked really well on this track. And basically, it's a it's a it's a kind of gated pad, so it's a it's a saw sound that's one long note. Basically, you know you'll see these are just each bar's own note, and a lot of overdrive. But you'll see that it's got a low pass filter on it. And then you'll see on the EQ how I've taken off the low end. And if you listen to this sound, it's quite basic, but it's also it's not really that audible, but it gives the bass line such a nice warm feeling. It's a lot just a lot of warmth. You'll hear if I take it out. Was quite a big gap in the track. So it's just something I worked around this track and then like in the previous example I'm using a bit of noise just to give the bass line a bit more attack. So you start layering these together. And then on top of that now, I've got my rolling bass, which is also, sorry but that's the noise, two layers of my rolling bass, which are also each sitting in their own, you know, one is sitting wider than the other. I found that the, the one is, I don't usually do this, but I used one for the wet signal. So all of the delay and, you know, the reverb and all that is sitting on one of them. And then one of them is, comp is dry basically. And that just helps give it a really wide sound and help me to process them each individually because I couldn't compress the one that had the delay and the reverb as hard as I could the dry one. And basically this is a, this is a bass preset that I modified. It's got a operator on it um, that gives it, helps, gives it that rolling feel. And you'll see that if we just take a bit of, if you want to see the notes or the MIDI, this is also the same pattern that I used for the noise. And if we go to, to my rolling bass, you'll see all the low end is removed. Like I say, whenever you're doing the top line of your bass or any of the frequent, any of the sounds are going to be sitting wide in the mix, you always want to remove as much low end. That's why we build the foundation with the sound is so that we don't need to have low end from sounds like this cluttering the mix. You'll see uh, my compression to get, give me a bit of attack. I used a bit of overdrive on the sound just to give it a bit of bite. Also a bit of saturation. Once again, Look at this high pass filter. This is removing more bass. Like I say, you don't want mud. You don't want to have any bass in the sounds that are sitting wide in the mix. And then my side chain compression. And yeah, that's it. As you can see, you know, it sounds very simple the way I'm going through them now, but it takes a lot of time and a lot of training your ears 
to get these, you know, get it right to layer so many frequencies, uh, I mean, so many sounds, and having them each sit in their own rage, you know, on the frequency spectrum and also in your stereo image, and not having them clash with each other. And just once again, this is what they sound like when we play together. Okay guys, so that's the how I apply to a rolling trance sound. And then next up we're going to be looking at a deep tech tack, which is where I'm going to show you how to make the bass treatment bus, which I've used on this track as well. Like I said, it's something I use a lot, and I'm going to show you guys how I've set that up using the deep tech track. Okay guys, this is the deep check track. Um, I showed you guys this track last week. But just to give you guys, let you guys hear it again. This is the bass. Okay, I use similar techniques when layering my deep tech. But I'm not going to be going into it again because we kind of already covered it now in the last two bass lines. But essentially, you'll hear that there's various layers here as well. And basically what happened, uh, this was a great example, was this bass line was, you know, this track is quite minimalistic. And so I was having a bit of a hard time getting the bass line to really pull through in the mix and be you know it's also because it's quite low to get it you know just as dominant and as fat as i wanted it and so that's a great example of when i would use my bass treatment bus and basically that's this over here so you can hear and basically when it, what i mean by bass treatment bus is um, it's actually something that I learned from watching JTEC in some of his videos and just um, reading some articles about how he does his music. And basically, the, the main idea is you it's very similar to parallel compression. So just like we would parallel compress something, essentially... Sorry, give me a second here. Basically what we're doing is we're creating a send track. Now for you guys that don't know what a send track is or an effects track, it's a track where you're going to send some wet signal and still leave your dry signal. I'll be doing a short video in the week showing you how to set up this kind of a setup from scratch, from blank profile, showing you how to do parallel compression and how to set up a bus. But for the guys that do know how to create send tracks, um, basically I'm using one specifically for treating my bass. And just something to remember as well that the principle for send track is the same whether you're using a live mixing desk, whether you're using Cubase or Ableton or Logic, it's the same thing. So essentially what happens is you create a new return track. And I don't think I can actually create any more. I think I've created oh wait, there we go. Insert return track. So you'd use a return track. And basically what I do is first thing, there's various ways of doing this, but I isolate the frequencies that I want to process. So like I said, I want to process bass. Then I do whichever processing I you know, actually want to apply. In this case, I wanted to bring out the harmonies in the bass line, so I used R bass. Then once again, I cut off all the frequencies I don't want, so all the high end. As I've said a couple of times, you always want this to be mono, so I made sure that everything was sitting dead center. And then I also applied some compression to bring it out. So it's a, we, we, in a way, we're kind of parallel compressing the bass line. And then... Just because it was starting to become a bit too dominant, I put my sidechain compression. And then basically what happens is, I'll just send through a little bit of the signal to the bass treatment bus. So if you guys listen to the bass line. You can hear, and you can see here, the signal. And so you guys can hear how sending a parallel signal there allows you to get that, allows you to compress or do something that would actually be too much if you were doing it straight on the actual bus. 
but because you're doing it in parallel, just like compression, you can get away with doing quite a bit more. And basically, it's, it's basically parallel compression, but for bass. But I just like to use a, a bass enhancing plugin as well. Okay, guys, so that's basically how I process my bass lines. If you guys have any questions, send them to me. Uh, it's, um, you guys can catch me on Twitter or Facebook, or otherwise go to www.stephanfluon.com. And yeah, let me know which questions you guys have, what you guys would like to see in the next video. And remember that I do do mastering services, mixing services, and tutoring services, so you can feel free to contact me about those as well. Have a great week, and I'll see you guys again next week. Thanks.